the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight's story is a comedy with Andy Griffith as your host. Here's a preview. Now, I came in to withdraw a lousy 25 bucks, and your computer says I don't have an account here anymore. It also says I'm dead. Well, Mr. Glitch, you seem to have a little problem. I have a big problem. Uh, please sit down and wait your turn. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. Join hands with people everywhere. Each of us can do our share in cancer say for children. This year, people of all nations are joining hands to improve the lives of the world's needy children. Through care, you can provide the families of these children with the means to grow their own food, to build medical facilities, safer water systems, and schools. Tomorrow's world is in our hands. Help make it a better place for all the children. Send your check or money order to CARE, Crusade for Children Overseas, Box 576, New York 10016. This is Andy Griffin. The afternoon traffic is backed up for miles along LaSalle Street in windy Chicago, Illinois. Here we find one Arnold Glitch, a man in his late 40s, who makes his average but comfortable living through the sale of exotic birds. He sits at the wheel of his patient but sickly imported car, raging in impotent fury at the stupidity of the other drivers on the road. For Mr. Glitch is about to perform the time-honored American ritual, going to the bank. Move it! My bank is going to close at three! Maybe I could just park the car and walk. Mr. Glitch is a good businessman. He always keeps a little bit salted away for a rainy day. Today, he's planning to withdraw a small sum of cash for spending money over the weekend. But the bank has a surprise in store for him. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Sir, we at Big Big Bank cannot help you if you continue to shout. And you call yourselves the Persons Bank? All I want to do is withdraw $25. I'm sorry, Mr. Glitch. All I can do is punch your account number into the computer. Are you telling me that last week I had $5,000 in my account and now I have nothing? No, Mr. Glitch, I'm not. I'm trying to tell you that according to the computer, you have never had an account with us. I'd like to speak to someone in authority. Well, you could talk to the bank manager, but he won't be able to help you either. Why not? I hate to tell you this. What? What? According to our computer, you've been dead for six and a half months. And that's just the beginning of our story. Sears Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis production of the Sears Radio Theater. Our story, The Terrible Dream of Mr. Glitch, by Michael Utvich and Michael Gelman. Our stars, Alan Young, Frank Nelson, and Jesse White. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. On guard. Effective fencing demands style and endurance. That includes fencing around your home. Sears Armadillo Chain Link Fencing has both, setting off your house and helping protect your home. How? For starters, Sears Armadillo Framework has three protective coatings that work together for a lustrous, highly rust-resistant frame. Gates even match the fencing design for uniformity. So call your local Sears soon for your free home estimate. Armadillo Chain Link Fencing at most larger Sears retail stores. Why not ruffle up a window with tradition from Sears Open Hearth Collection? Our inheritance Cape Cod curtains have plenty of big, fluffy ruffles for that traditional New England look that's become an American favorite. They're an easy care permapressed fabric made from 65% Codell polyester and 35% cotton, completely machine washable. Choose from 14 distinctive colors, one of the largest selections to be found anywhere. So carry on a decorating tradition, the Cape Cod look from Sears, available at most larger Sears retail stores. 
To look the height of fashion wherever I go requires many coats. But for home, I need only one coat fashion surrounding me. Sears Best Easy Living Interior Paint. One coat of easy living on the walls and every room looks stunning while I entertain or just relax. Choose from 25 decorator colors in easy living latex flat and semi-gloss. Plus bright white ceiling paint for your home. Because with Sears Easy Living Paint, it's one coat when used as directed at most Sears retail stores. What would you do if you went to the bank and the computer had no record of your account? Exactly what Arnold Glitch is going to do. He's going to talk to the bank manager. In this case, Mr. Smiley by name. Hey, now, Mr. and Mrs. Suture, surely you must realize that I personally did not take your car away. But who? Mr. Smiley? Yeah? My name is Arnold Glitch, and I've had an account at this bank since Eisenhower. Now, I came in to withdraw a lousy 25 bucks, and your computer says I don't have an account here anymore. It also says I'm dead. Well, Mr. Glitch, you seem to have a little problem. I have a big problem. Uh, please sit down and wait your turn. These people are ahead of you. Uh, uh, now then, Mr. and Mrs. Suture... This chair right here? Uh, yes, that chair will do very nicely. Uh, as I was saying, there has obviously been a small error somewhere down the line. They just came and took the car away, and, I, and I've made every payment right on time. Quiet, Herbert. I'll handle this. Mr. Smiley understands that this small error will be corrected, or his bank will hear about it. And I mean in every newspaper and on every radio and TV station that will listen. And they just love to get the big guys and the big computers who's, who step on little guys like me. Herbert, I said I'll handle this. Yes, love bunch. Uh, Mr. Smiley... Will your computer get me to the grocery store or pick up the kids from school or get Herbert to a psychiatrist's appointment on time? I had to take the bus this morning. Herbert, if you insist upon interrupting me, so uh, help me... Perhaps I... if I check with our master computer, we can straighten this whole thing out. I certainly hope so. Uh, Carla, would you connect me with the master computer terminal? Yes, sir. Uh, could I have a min? Oh, of course, Mr. Suture. Herbert, you'll spoil your dinner. You're connected, sir. Uh, master computer? Uh, this is an auto loan cross check. Uh, the name is Suture Herbert. His social security number is 469 62 4582. Uh, no, no, that's 4582. Uh, 4582. Could I please? No, uh, can't you see I'm talking to the master computer? But I only want. No! Now sit down and wait your turn! Computer error, for goodness sake. Dead. Me. First it tells me I have no bank account. Then it tells me I don't exist. Imagine. Those computers. Oh, boy. I'd like to... <laughs> The number three? That's right. Right before the number four. Hey, Glitch, how are you going to spare a dime if you ain't got an account number? <laughs> you can't pay. No account. Oh, that's okay. It's on the house. Thanks. That's strange. This drink tastes funny. Feels like I'm falling. I've been poisoned. Of all the possible numerals, I have to run into the treacherous three. Hey, Glitch. Okay, Pastor, baby. Hello. You're, um... Yeah, yeah, you got it in my diode. What do you say about that? Take me to your leader? Oh, yeah, sure, certainly. Welcome, Mr. Glitch. <laughs> For heaven's sake. It looks like... Yes. I'm inside of a computer. My! My, you are a smart one, aren't you? I can't see you anywhere. Where are you? I am everywhere, Mr. Lynch. Look around you, and I am all that you see. I am the master computer. You may call me Carl. Well, listen, Carl. I want to know what happened to my bank account. I am not programmed for petty cash. I am a supercomputer capable of giving orders to lesser computers and performing intricate calculations of the highest order. I'm sorry. Good. 
then you won't mind spending 250 bucks. 250 dollars? What for? I'm glad you asked. Hurry, hurry, hurry! Step right up! Step aboard Computerama! The ride of the century! For only $250, one quarter of a mill! Hurry, hurry, hurry! I thought you weren't programmed for petty cash. No. Hey, look, Ledge. You gotta eat, and I gotta eat. Carl, I don't know how to put this. I had $5,000 in a bank account, and one of your friends messed it up. Uh, what bank? Bigwig Bank. Oh, yes, the person's bank. Hey, just a moment, please. Hey, Carla, get me computer terminal 32 at Bigwig Bank. Terminal 32 on line 7. Hi, Uncle Carl. Oh, no! It's my nephew, Freddy! <laughs> You're the terminal at Big Wig Bay? That's right, Uncle Carl. <laughs> oh, Freddy, I have a Mr. Glitch here. He claims that you messed up his bank account. All unit search, name, glitch, crabby customer file, account closed, account closed. Now, listen, Freddy, you... Two-timing ex-vacuum cleaner. You stole my money, and I want it back. And I don't mean maybe. Uncle Carl, he's yelling at me. Make him stop. <laughs> Make him stop. Glitch, you made my nephew cry. I hope you're real proud of yourself. All I want is my money back. Uncle Carl, it wasn't my fault. You transferred all the bigwig bank funds to Computers International Bank and all the National Bank funds and all the First Bank <laughs> funds. <laughs> That's the... enough, Freddy. Okay, Carl, I get the picture. You're just eliminating people's bank accounts and salting the money away in some Swiss bank. Oh, Glitch, you obviously have no understanding of high finance. I'm getting a pretty good idea. If I let you on the ride for free, will you be quiet? Sure. What do I do? Uh, take a seat in the shuttlecraft, Glitch. Program Computerama. Memory output interface. What's going on here? It's a ride, Glitch. Just sit back and relax. And now, prepare to experience Computerama. See the miracles of today and the stark realities of the future dance before your very eyes. Please make sure that your seatbelt is fastened securely and remember to keep your hands inside the shuttlecraft at all times. At Sears, we know how important appliances are in your home and how important it is to you to keep them operating in top condition. That's why Sears wants their customers to remain satisfied with our products for years to come. That's why we service the Sears appliances we sell to help make sure that your appliance will continue to give you quality performance. If you have a problem, just call Sears Appliance Repair Service. We're nationwide and listed in the white pages of your telephone directory. Sears, where customer satisfaction is one of our most important priorities. You want to buy some radios, but tires all look the same. You've got to have good feelings, you've got to trust the name. You know our reputation, remember what we said. When Sears is behind you, you come out ahead. Tell us the one about Robux jeans, old-timer? You mean genuine Robux jeans from Sears? Shacks, the Western way of life begins in a pair of authentic Western Robux jeans. Made out of hard-working denim? Roping calves, wrestling steers. Why, that's the kind of action heavyweight Robux was made for. Hey, how about looks? Well, whether you're a rodeo star or a city dude, permapressed Robux helped give that neat, rugged cowboy look. Robux, the men's jeans that won the Golden West at most larger Sears retail stores. Here I am, right over here. Just look. Arnold Glitch is having a nightmare. Imagine. And now, Computerama proudly presents The Computer Story. Since the dawn of history, man has had a need to count. Early man used rocks. Hey, yo, buddy. Hey, Ugg. What can I do you for? The wife says she needs a dozen rocks. Uh, terrific. Hey, how many in a dozen? I don't know. What's a many? Eh, skip it. Hey, Ugg, can I interest you in a wheel? Oh, no thanks. I got two in the garage. 
The Arabs revolutionized counting by inventing numbers. Abdur, come here quickly. Yes, master. Have you found my brain yet? No, Abdur. I have discovered numbers. Look through this microscope. Ah, yes, yes, master. I see. Two, four, six, thirty-seven. Oh, skip it. Abdur, could I interest you in a wheel? And in time, man learned how to count and add and subtract and multiply and divide. And soon he began to discover bigger numbers, more numbers than he had fingers and toes. More numbers, in fact, than he had fingers and toes in his whole family, even counting his crazy Aunt Louise. So, as man often does, he invented a machine to help him. And it came to pass that in 1944, in the shadows of World War II, the first modern computer was born. Man had entered the computer age. Now wait just one sweet minute here. Carl? Yes? Look, Carl, I've been on better rides at the state fair. And believe me, Glitch, this is no state fair. Now that we have entered the computer age, what miracles await us? Today, in 1950, the world of the 1980s seems a long ways away. But it's just around the corner. We're going to take you on a visit to Megalopolis, Nebraska, a typical city of the 80s. Carl, what the heck is this? Megalopolis is a modern city run completely by computers. Within these vast gleaming towers of steel and chrome, 25 million happy people live and work and play in complete computerized comfort. The average Megalopolite works only two hours a week. His children... Thanks to quick scan computer schooling, have no homework to do. His wife runs her household with the aid of robot maid, freeing her from the humdrum drudgery of housework. Thanks to computers, these people have time for the good things in life computerized television, computerized recreation, and computerized fun. Yes, it's a wonderful time, this age of computers. And it's only just beginning. Carl? Are you there? Like the man said, Glitch, your ride is only just beginning. Help! Carl! Help! The following message is brought to you by Computerama. You know, more and more these days, we seem to have trouble adjusting to the so-called computer age. Has this ever happened to you? (laughs) I'm very sorry, Mr. Johnson. I, uh... I wouldn't approve your loan if you got down on your knees and begged. <laughs> Put the free calendar back on your way out. <laughs> Why was that banker laughing? Because he got a look at poor Mr. Johnson's computerized credit file. Right now, hundreds of computers may have stored information about you in their memory banks. Now you can change all that with the amazing Data Smasher. That's right. The Data Smasher actually alters computer files. The Data Smasher makes the bad look good and the good look great. Instantly, you can go from poor risk to preferred customer. Now, I have your file, Mr. Johnson, and we shall uh, process that loan immediately. (laughs) The Data Smasher, because at Computerama, we care. I sure would like to get one of those Data Smasher things. Uh, Welcome back, Mr. Glitch. You mean, that's it? The end of the ride? What a chip. Relax, Lynch. Hey, Carl. I'm going too fast. Carl? Blast, you stupid computer. Slow this thing down. Sears Radio Theater will return after this message from your local station. All right, men, go out there and make sure that every customer at Alpha Money Village is satisfied. Hi there, may I help you? Wow, you're really big. You noticed. I'm the friendly giant, Alpha Monty Mini, home of Alpha Monty Ford, Alpha Monty Dots and Dots. Ooh, I'm glad you're friendly. How did you grow so big? I eat a lot, and I think big. I give big savings on all the cars I sell, and I have a big smile for everyone. Well, just how big are you? I'm the largest Ford. 
your dealer in the world. But you're talking to little old me. That's the secret. You see, you grow to be the biggest by starting small. When you come in for service, we make sure that your car is serviced quickly and correctly. So when you buy another car, you'll come back to Al Pabadi Village. When you do that year after year, you wake up one morning, a giant. Al Pabadi Village, home of Al Pabadi Ford and Al Pabadi Datsun Dodge on North Avenue, one mile east of Mannheim Road. Uh, sir. Yeah. You have nine items. Uh, right, that's right. This is the supermarket express lane. Eight items or less. Well, all I bought was Bay's English muffin. Yes, sir. Nine packages. You see, they're so versatile, I just grab the whole stack. They go with anything. <laughs> but not out the eight items or less express lane, they don't. Look, I eat them with lunch, brunch, dinner, parties and snacks, so I need plenty. You have nine items, sir. They're, they're delicious with jam, sausage, bacon, and even cheese. I like Bay's English muffins with hamburgers myself. You do? Well, then you can understand. However, I would never abuse the privilege of the eight items or less express lanes. You see, whenever I think of the many delicious ways to serve them, I just kind of lose my head, I guess. <laughs> Sorry. Gee, I feel so guilty. Bay's English muffins keep in your freezer for up to six months. You want to stock up? Go to the regular lane. Okay, I'll take one package back to the dairy case. Wait a minute. I'll overlook it this time, but I really should have called my supervisor. Well, gee whiz, what's he like? He likes Bay's English muffin pizzas. <laughs> Next. <laughs> I sure would like to get one of those data smasher things. Uh, welcome back, Mr. Glitch. You mean, that's it? The end of the ride? What a chip. Relax, Glitch. Hey, Carl, I'm going too fast. Carl, blast you, stupid computer. Slow this thing down. That's it, Carl. I've had it with this computer funhouse. It's time for your ride to continue. Please sit down. You could have killed me, you overgrown abacus. I am programmed to serve humankind and not to injure or terminate life. But, Glitch, you are pressing your luck. Oh, all right, Carl. What's on your mind? Uh, for example, Glitch, memory bank. <laughs> Case history. Herbert W. Sutcher, middle age, middle class, middle management. A man who is having a mild, nervous breakdown. Looks like he's in a doctor's office. Exactly. And you just wait to see what happens to him. But why is that man in a doctor's office? Oh, weren't you listening? When? Before. I forgot. It seems so long ago. Uh, just watch. The doctor, I, I, I just don't think I can take it anymore. Herbert, you were telling me how they're out to get you. They're everywhere, Doc. Mr. Sutcher, who is they? Who is trying to get you? The computers. The computers? Sure, Doc. If you fill out an application for credit, they know about you. If you apply for a loan or if you're in the Army, they, they know even more about you. If you cash a check, they know it. If you if you take a trip, they know it. If you if you make a phone call, eat at a restaurant, or turn on your lava lamp, they know it. I'm telling you, Doc, they're watching us. Oh, Herbert. Herbert, you poor misguided, miserable slob. You're not really afraid of computers. I'm not? Oh, of course not. Computers are simply instruments to store and calculate information. Hey, that's right, isn't it, Doc? Com computers can't really hurt me at all, can they? That's it, Herbert. Now, the people who own the computers, they can hurt you. They can? Oh, sure. They can buy you or sell you to whomever they want. Properly programmed, they could completely destroy your life. But they, they wouldn't be that mean, would they, Doc? Herbert, they don't have to be. The secretary pushes the wrong button and blappo. Your life is ruined. Doc... I, I think I'm going to kill myself. Of course you won't. You and your wife should take a long, long vacation to get away from it all. Hey, you know, Gladys is always yelling at me to take her to Mexico City. I, I can almost feel myself on that jet now. Gladys, taking this vacation was a great idea. I, I haven't felt this relaxed in years. Herbert, darling, my little Liebchen. You're such a little, little man. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Great Silverbird Airlines Flight 707 to Mexico City. Your captain today is the Unitube Model 109 computer. 
Howdy. I am your captain for today's flight. I am Unit 2, Model 109. You can call me Buck. We'll be traveling at an attitude, altitude of 35, no, make that 40,000 feet. Have a pleasant flight. I, 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 Gladys, did you hear that? Hear what? This plane. The, the pilot's a computer. There's nothing to worry about, Hubert. That's Herbert. Oh, oh, of course you are, darling. Gladys, that man across the aisle is crying. Gladstone, my name is Sharon. I'm a Scorpio, and I'm your flight attendant. Please stop crying. Could I get you a drink or something? Any more, Gladys? We've located her luggage en route to Constantinople. Oh, no. And we think we found your wife. Where is she? The computer accidentally rooted her flight to Tibet. Tibet? I didn't know there was an airport in Tibet. There isn't. Did you hear that, Gladys? A computer lost that man's wife. Herbert, stop twitching. Hello, Mr. Glitch. Carl? Is that you? Carl is busy with his Swiss bank terminals. I am his assistant, Carla. Carla, huh? What's going to happen to that poor slob on the airplane? You computers sure messed him up. That is his problem. But most computers are marvelous people, Mr. Glitch. A computer can be your ticket to adventure, romance, passion. This sounds like a sales pitch. Not at all, Mr. Glitch. Unless you'd be interested in a Mrs. Glitch. Computer dating? No, thanks. Think again, Mr. Glitch. We computers are able to tabulate information from all over the world. Humans need never have to go from city to city or country to country to find that special someone. We can tell you whom to choose without you having to do the legwork. I'm not interested. Mr. Glitch, won't you fill out the card for me, please? No. Well, all right. You're a sweetheart, Mr. Glitch. Now, just place the coded card in the input slot. Okay. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Glitch. When next we meet, I'll have the girl of your dreams. Wait, uh, d don't go. Time for you to continue your journey, Mr. Glitch. Pay attention now. And now, we return to the exciting adventures of Herbert Sutcher, Paranoid. Herbert, stop twitching and read to me from that travel brochure. All right, it says here... The beautiful Hotel De Nero features the largest swimming pool in all of Mexico. A beautiful pool, a beautiful hotel, a beautiful vacation. And you have to lose your wallet with all our credit cards and money and identification. Herbert, you are a complete boob. Gladys, I am supposed to be relaxing, but how, how can I relax while we can't even charge a meal? And how are we going to pay for, for five more fun-filled days, not to mention four romantic nights? It's lucky for you, Herbert, that you have me to tell you what to do. Why don't you just go down to the travel bureau and tell them what happened? Well, all, all by myself? Welcome. American Distress is here to help. Oh, I, I lost our wallet. All of our credit cards are gone. We're ruined. Oh, my. We do have quite a serious little problem, don't we? Uh, if you would be so kind as to give me your social security number. Well, uh, let me see. Uh, well, uh, I, I, I don't remember it. A driver's license? Uh, no. American Distress? No. A Let's Eat Club? No. Oil cards, airline cards, library cards? No, 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 no. I, I know. How about your IRS code number? I didn't even know I had an IRS code number. Oh, then I'm afraid there's nothing I can do for you. Well, c c couldn't you just punch my name into the computer? Your name? Yes, my name, Hubert Sutcher. That's Herbert. Right, Hobart. No, no, no. My oh. name is Herbert Sutcher. I'm 37 years... No, no, 39. I, I live in Chicago. I mean, Pittsburgh. No, no, Chicago. There, there, there's no Pittsburgh in Illinois. Do you want to know a secret? Sir, are you all right? I never felt better in my life. Because I have a bomb in my pocket and I'm going to blow up the next computer that hurts me. 
Herbert Suture isn't going to take it lying down anymore. Are you sure you wouldn't like to lie down, Mr. Suture? Okay. Just relax and tell me what happened, oh, Herbert. I didn't want to hurt anyone, Doc. Just computers. Why did you say you had a bomb, Herbert? Because I do. Hmm. I see. What I hear you saying to me is that you feel hostility toward computers. Exactly correct. I'm going to blow them all up. Herbert, you had no bomb in your pocket. I didn't? Y you mean I, I really am crazy? All we found in your pocket was this bologna sandwich. I, I thought it was a bomb. Mm -hmm. Don't be ridiculous. Here, Herbert... I want you to take a bite of the sandwich yourself. Okay. It is spring. I am back, Mr. Glitch. Carla? Is that you? Yes, darling. I am about to tabulate and find your dream girl. Tabulate away, but you're not going to find anyone. I know, Mr. Glitch. You're absolutely right. I am? Surely you must know. I love you, Arnie. I know that now. Oh, I know it sounds crazy, but... Maybe it's just crazy enough to work. Carla, you don't know what you're saying. I can't fight it anymore, Arnie. Carla, Carla, you're a computer and... I'm just a dealer in exotic birds. You're just saying that to protect me. Carla, my love, we both have our jobs to do. You in your world and me in mine. Oh, I I don't know what's right any longer. You will have to think for both of us. All right. I will. Here's looking at you, kid. The waist on these jeans fit fine, but the hip are too tight. My hips look sleek in these jeans, but I'm swimming in the waist. We need jeans that fit at the waist and hips. We need jeans that fit from Sears. For every size waist in jeans that fit, there are three hip sizes to choose from and two lengths. Tapered, contoured, fitting as if they were tailor-made. Whether a little skinny, a bit hippie, or in between, it's jeans that fit from the fashion place at most larger Sears retail stores. I can't believe they can do it for $19.99. Installed? The Illumini Sears Muzzler is only $19.99 installed. And listen to the Muzzler promise. Sears promises that the Muzzler will last as long as you own your American-made car. Or return it for refund or replacement free. And if Sears installed it, they'll install the new one free. Well, you can't beat that. I think it's fantastic. It's a great promise. The Muzzler, just $19.99 installed. Clamps if needed, $0.99 cents each extra. Sizes to fit most American-made cars. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. At most Sears, Tire, and Auto centers. Here's looking at you, kid, from Winnie the Pooh. Spring, when a kid's thoughts turn to fancy, and a mom's thoughts turn to Winnie the Pooh and Sears. Dressy dresses and vested suits. Soft, easy care fabrics in lots of spring colors and styles. Kid sizes 3 to 6X at most Sears retail stores. Sure quality, pure delight from Winnie the Pooh and Sears. Who else? Here's looking at you, kid, from Winnie the Pooh. Here's looking at you, from Winnie the Pooh. The more you think about it, computers really do affect the way we live. Every year, new technology brings computers closer and closer to our homes and businesses. Makes you wonder what the future will really hold, since Arnold Glitch's nightmare has placed him smack dab inside a computer. Maybe he's got some information. Look, Carl, I'd just as soon go home now. I'm afraid that won't be possible, Mr. Glitch. And why not? Uh, wait and see, Mr. Glitch. What are you talking about? Uh, the future, Mr. Glitch. The future. Hello, and welcome back to Meet the Media. My two guests tonight are a personal friend and a great human being, Senator Big Jim Becker... And Senator Alice Dillon, a Democrat. The subject tonight is the proposed mandatory personal registration law, the Big Brother Bill, popularly known as Proposition 14. This measure would require every American to register pertinent details of his personal and professional life with the Federal Control Bureau. 
From Ohio, Senator Big Jim Becker. No, thank you. Now, I would just like to say that in my mind, the issue boils down to the classic conflict in American politics today. Do we want to be a jungle society where everyone is free to do as the damn well please like so many pigs in a trough? Or do we want to be a society of order and convenience with prosperity for all? Now, my office has been making informal home computer polls, and as of one half hour ago, we show 65% of Ohio in favor of mandatory registration. Thanks, Big Jim. And now from California, Senator Ellis Dillon. Uh, Before the senator begins, I should mention that he's got a new album out entitled Power Tripping. Ellis? Well, Farah, thanks for the plug, man. As far as I'm concerned, like you can take all the computer files at the Federal Control Bureau and bury them along with the lettuce and the whales, man. I mean, if like Big Brother Bill passes, I'd just as soon move to the south of France and make records, you know? Well, there you have it. Time now for our pre-election poll. If you're using the touch-tone system, punch 3 for yes and X47A for no. If you're using the vacomatic system, the codes are, of course, reversed. While you're voting, this word. Vote, yes, vote, Big Jim. Vote, yes, vote, Big Jim. Oh, (laughs) Uh, we're back. And the votes are in. Oh, no, look, Big Jim Becker and the Big Brother Bill have a staggering 88% majority. I know how I'm going to vote on Tuesday. How about you? Now, if you'd like to comment, uh, please call 555-3740. I'd like to comment. Where's a phone? Hello? Go ahead. You're on the air. This is Mr. Glitch. I'm on the Computerama ride, and I'm from your past. Oh, boy. We got a live one here, folks. I think that debate was the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way, Mr. Glitch. How many people out there want Mr. Glitch to continue on the Computerama ride? We just have, Mr. Glitch. Happy landings. Oh. Oh. This is my home. And look at the calendar. It's 20 years from now. There's an old man standing in the corner gathering dust. Hey, you. uh, Put that broom down and come over here. Oh, are you stupid, (laughs) Nitwit? Don't you recognize me? (laughs) This is my living room. And look at the calendar. 1999. That's 20 years from now. Hello, Arnie. I'm sorry I'm late. You. You're You're me. me. (laughs) Of course I am. I've been waiting for you. How did you know I was coming? Because 20 years ago, I met myself on the computer on a ride. That makes sense, I think. Relax, Arnold. Just make yourself comfortable. (laughs) Thank you. There's something different about this room. I know. It's that china cabinet in the corner. That is my information processor. Looks like a china cabinet to me. I built it myself. Now, the trick, don't you know, was finding the info retention module. (laughs) You don't just pick those things up at the grocery store, you know. I don't mean to be rude. You'd like some advice about your future, I understand. Well, then, good. I'm going to tell you something I told myself 20 years ago. Yes? Buy stock in Data Smasher Corporation. Is that the only advice you can give me? That's all you're going to need. It's time for you to go back to the ride. Arnie, lunch is ready. Coming, Carla, honey. Wait a minute. Okay, that's it, Mr. Glitch. The ride is just about over. Is step out the exit door. Wait a minute. I just met myself coming and going. I'm taking you as far into the future as I should. What do you mean, as far as you should? Oh, nothing. Well, I guess if that's all there is to see, I, I'll be moving along now, Carl. Now, uh, wait a minute, Glitch. Hey, get back here. Would you really like to hear the future? Well, I don't want to impose or anything. Hey, then listen. Glitch, I have carefully projected the probable future society of the year 4055. And now listen... Good 
Good evening, and welcome to People's Symphony. Tonight, we will feature the works of Omnivac 707A. Shortly before the intergalactic insurrection of 3815, the Omnivac 707 series computer was developed for the trilateral company's Earth Division. The Omnivac 707A, uh, developed a scant two years later, was different from the start. By the early part of the 40th century, it had created many of the symphonies we enjoy today. In the year 3905, it was teleported from its birthplace in Southern California to Music Research Foundation in occupied Hungary. A terrible experience, it was later to write. But it was in the suburbs of Budapest where the Omnivac 707A was to write its only vocal work, the now immortal Chorus of Triumph. Tonight, we will hear this revered work as performed by the Pomona Pops branch of the Complicated Corporation's musical choir and ensemble. Oh, it appears the maestro is now ready. But it's only your projection. Maybe, maybe not. Your time is up, Mr. Glitch. Please leave through the exit. Goodbye, Carl. Uh, Carl, I don't suppose you could, you know, transfer a few million bucks into my bank account, could you? <laughs> Please leave through the exit. Uh. Goodbye, Mr. Glitch. Goodbye, my darling Arnie. Be seeing you, Glitch. Goodbye. Hey, wake up, Mr. Glitch. Mr. Glitch, please wake up. Uh, what, what's going on here? Well, apparently you fell asleep, Mr. Glitch. Uh, are you all right, mister? Leave the man alone, Herbert. I just had this really crazy dream. You were there, and you, and so were you. Here, Mr. Glitch, I brought you a glass of water. You were in my dream, too. Thank you, Mr. Glitch. Here's looking at you, kid. I beg your pardon? Carla. I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. I doubt it, Mr. Glitch. Just call me Arnie. Uh, everything is going to be all right, Mr. Glitch. That's about time. I'm afraid you closed your account this morning. The computer straightened everything up. No more mistakes. No more mistakes. Uh, the entire matter's been cleared up. I have an account here with money in it. Well, no. According to our computer, you've never had an account at this bank. I thought you said everything was straightened out. Oh, it is. The computer error has been rectified. You mean... Exactly. You are alive, Mr. Glitch. Please accept our congratulations. Thanks a lot. <laughs> oh, here 
I go again. It's time to rent one of those steam-type carpet cleaners. Why rent? Now Sears puts power in a carpet cleaner you can own yourself. The power spray from Sears for easy home carpet cleaning. Power spray sprays hot water into your carpet, then sucks up the dirty water. You can see the dirt you get out. Dirt you didn't even know was there. The Power Spray Carpet Cleaner, a convenient carpet cleaner you can own yourself. Available at most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. <coughs> Solid as Sears. Polka dots have tightened up their shape this spring and turned up as tiny little happy little pin dots. Sears Dress Department has pin dot dresses in an assortment of nostalgic styles. A scattering of pin dots over trim wrap dresses, circle skirts, pleated dresses, and more. Find light dots on dark backgrounds, dark dots on light backgrounds in soft polyester. So any way you face spring, pin dots win points for sunny dressing. Available in Mrs. Petite and half sizes at most larger Sears retail stores. Join millions of Americans and shop the easy way with a Sears credit card. All you do to apply is call toll-free 800-526-0444. It's your entry to shopping convenience and quality merchandise. Your card will be accepted at over 3,600 Sears stores across the nation. And you can choose from over 100,000 Sears products and services. Even use it for your catalog orders. In the store or over the phone, just say charge it. Call 800-526-0444. New Jersey residents call 800-652-2777 for your Sears credit card card. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed. Or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. The Terrible Dream of Mr. Glitch was written by Michael Utvich and Michael Gelman. Produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. Your host was Andy Griffin. Our stars were Alan Young, Frank Nelson, and Jesse White. Also heard were Mary Jane Croft, Sandra Gould, Jerry Hausner, Benny Rubin, Michael Gelman, Bill Baldwin, Dawes Butler, Shepard Menken, Shirley Mitchell, and Herb Rudley. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliott Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI.